Welcome to the PAS Report Weekly Roundup Podcast. The PAS Report provides an honest analysis on the critical issues that matter to you without the biased media filters. Here's your host, Professor Nicholas Giordano. Welcome back, everybody. Our next guest is a college political science professor. God bless him a campus reform higher education fellow and the host of the PAS podcast. At this point, I don't think there's anything that he doesn't do, but one case, Nicholas Giordano, has been a beacon of transparent light on are the very tactics the Biden administration uses to indoctrinate our youth and politically weaponize our higher education system. Nicholas, I am sure the majority of college students are thinking Biden is glorious for fighting to cancel student loans, but what really is going on in the education system that they should be focused on instead? They should be focused on this radical push for diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice. I mean, we, we just witnessed uh, the CUNY graduate, Mohammed, uh, Fatima Mohammed, come out there and blast our entire legal system as based on white supremacy. She called the NYPD a bunch of fascists, and this is at a graduation ceremony. And she uh, alluded to anti-Semitic remarks throughout her speech. She's going to be a future lawyer. And this is what she's arguing, but she's not alone. We've seen this in graduation ceremonies throughout the United States, and Campus Reform has highlighted it. Dr. Scott Atlas was giving a graduation commencement speech, and he was met with shouts of, go F yourself. Now, imagine being in that audience. That that should be an embarrassment to the families that came to watch their, their young adults. They're not children anymore. Their young adults receive their degrees. It should be a day of celebration. And yet this is the way the student body is behaving. So why are they behaving this way? Well, it's partly due to the indoctrination that's taking place on these college campuses where we're just lumping everyone into groups, pitting the groups against each other. We're pushing this false premise of, of white supremacy out there. And then you have the Biden administration weaponizing higher education by providing Homeland Security grant funding to universities and institutions where in their grant applications, they lay out how Fox News and the Republican Party, the Christian Broadcasting Network, as well as the Heritage Foundation, are the initial seeds of right-wing extremism. Turning Point USA and Prager University, they're one step below neo-Nazi organizations. So this is the radical approach that has been taken by the Biden administration and throughout academia, and it is concerning, because these are the people that are going to be future leaders in law, in business, in education, in public policy, and yet look at how they're how they conduct themselves. Right. Well, and and my concern is that this. I mean, we we know that this started a long, long time ago because the students of thirty years ago and twenty years ago are now the ones who are weaponizing the justice system. So, of course, I've got to get your opinion on the last twenty four hours. The uh, the news that President Trump has received a target notification of this investigation by Jack Smith. What what are your thoughts? Well, again, I, I just find it extremely interesting. When it comes to President, former President Trump and the investigations, everything leaks out, right? We get anonymous source after anonymous source. It's, it's leaking like a sieve. And yet when it comes to President Biden, who's also under a special counsel investigation for classified documents, you don't hear a peep. I mean, we, we learned about Hunter Biden's laptop from Miranda Devine in 2020, even though the FBI had it since 2019. We learned about the FD-1023 this year, even though the, the FBI has had this document since 2020 and it has footnotes that refer to 2017. Here we are six years later. Washington, D.C. can't keep anything a secret for six years, and, and yet they are. So I think we're seeing the continued weaponization, not just of higher education, but of government institutions as well. And the Biden administration has made clear under the national strategy for countering domestic terrorism that anyone that descends from the government narrative, the government approved narrative, they, they could be expressing anti-government, anti-authority sentiment, and therefore declared as a domestic terrorist. So it's the increasing weaponization that we're seeing today. We see the double standards, but it goes beyond that. I, I think that the weaponization of the FBI and our bureaucratic institutions represents the greatest threat to this country. Nicholas, I want to put on someone's pollster hat for a moment and ask you to give us just just a casual poll of what you see in your classroom, because, you know, oftentimes it's the negative news that gets the most attention. It's the negative action by students. It's the segregated uh, graduation ceremonies. It's the commencement speeches like Fatima uh, Mohammed's. It's those types of stories get the negative attention. But when it comes down to it in your classroom, 
Is there maybe a little bit more diversity of thought? Is that something that we can cling to as a silver lining? There is, and there's actually hope because in my classroom, and I think in community colleges in general, uh, the student body isn't as ideological as maybe a four-year university system where they all have similar backgrounds and, and they belong in a bubble together. Where uh, at a community college, you have people that actually have real world life problems or challenges that they're facing. Some of them have children, some of them are taking care of elderly adults. Many of them are working uh, and a lot of them are working full time. And so they have to juggle. So they understand what the real world is about. And, and so it is different. The, the diversity opinion in my classrooms, it seems like it's almost evenly split, 40% Democrat, 40% Republican, and 20%, they just don't care about anything. And they're probably the happiest people out of everyone. Uh, so it is a little bit different. But the interesting thing, a Gallup poll was released today that showed social conservatism ha has actually increased. There are more people that are socially conservative today, according to this Gallup poll, than in previous years. And I found that really interesting. So a lot of times we hear that the country is economically conservative, but socially it's liberal. But it appears that all this push for diversity, equity, and inclusion, the, the whole gender ideology push, it's actually moving more and more people, including young adults, towards conservatism. Yeah, well, I think that for people who are socially liberal and libertarian, we've all seen the, the fruits of that, and it hasn't been too nice, especially right now in Pride Month and seeing what has happened uh, at a lot of those events. I want to ask you very quickly, we don't have time to play this, this clip, but uh, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink was talking in a speech about having to force things on companies, force ideologies, diversity, um, equity and inclusion, these types of values on businesses. And I'm actually long on, the, on, on this. I'm actually very positive because I think when you look at companies like Bud Light and Target and they see that they have been on the receiving end of, of people's wrath when it comes to this type of garbage, Silicon Valley Bank having, you know, checking off lots of boxes on their executive board, but not a risk manager. And I just have to think that for companies who might want to go to BlackRock for investments, I would think that they would rather have customers and income than debt. Does that make sense to you? It certainly does. And I think with Larry Fink and BlackRock, while he did say that, you know, essentially we're going to try and get companies to, to do our bidding, really it's about the consumer, right? They, they want to socially right. engineer this society on, on a grand scale, something that we've never witnessed to this level before. And it's all about social engineering. Yeah. But the consumers are pushing back. And, and sooner or later, the corporate yeah. boards are going to realize that the consumers the ones with the real dollar. And, and if they don't yep. get out of their politics, they're going to hurt themselves. That's right. And it's been glorious to see the backlash. It's now called the Bud Light Effect. Talk about that for a colloquialism. Nicholas Giordano, thank you, sir. We'll be right back after these commercials. PAS Report listeners, hurricane season is almost here, and the time to prepare is right now, not when the hurricane hits. When Hurricane Ida hit the Gulf Coast, it destroyed countless homes and left many without access to food and clean water. Millions lost power, some for weeks. The floods that followed the hurricane washed out roads, made it impossible for grocery stores to restock their shelves. Families were desperate. They were waiting for help that was slow to arrive. But what if you didn't have to rely on FEMA to provide for your family during a crisis? The answer is simple. Be prepared with emergency food kits from 4Patriots. Their long-lasting and delicious food options are specifically designed to provide you and your loved ones with the sustenance you need when you need it most. And these food kits are hand-packed in the USA, last up to 25 years, compact inside covert storage totes, include a wide variety of delicious breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, and they're backed by thousands of five-star customer reviews. For Patriots, survival food is not just for natural disasters. In today's world of uncertain supply chains and unpredictable emergencies, it's more important than ever to have a backup plan. Whether it's temporary power outage, a winter blizzard, rising food costs, you can rest easy knowing that you have a reliable source of food to see you through. And right now, you can go to 4Patriots.com, use code PAS to get 10% off your first purchase on anything in the store, including the emergency food supply kits that are designed to last up to 25 years. Just go to 4Patriots.com, use code PAS to get 10% off your first purchase of 4 Patriots survival food. You're listening to The Steve Malzberg Show on today's News Talk Radio, TNT. All right, folks, it's four minutes after the hour of 10 here on... Thursday night, Thursday night, June 8th, 2023. And you know what day and time it is wherever you're listening to the uh, Steve Malzberg show on TNT radio. I gave the full date, including the year, because history uh, has been made. Because for the first time, a uh, former United States president 
has been uh, indicted on federal charges. I know that he was indicted by a grand jury in New York on the um, the whole, you know, money to the porn star, blah, blah, blah. But the Stormy Daniels thing was it was not a federal grand jury. This is a history making moment, not a good one, but a history making moment. Nonetheless, um, Donald Trump will appear in federal court in Miami on Tuesday, I think at uh, three or between three and four p.m. And there are uh, at least seven counts in the indictment. And according to one of Trump's attorneys, who I saw speaking on CNN just moments ago, those charges include conspiracy, false statements, retention of uh, documents that uh, fit under the Espionage Act. So those are just some of the uh, the seven. Let's see, one, two, three. That's four of the seven. And who knows what the uh, the other three are? Um, I I it, I can't say it's total coincidence because there was talk that this might happen today. So in anticipation of that, uh, I did reach out to um, my friend who uh, you are probably familiar with because he's been on this show. Um, several times, I'm very, very happy to say, and uh, Professor uh, Professor Nicholas Giordano, Professor of Political Science, host of the PAS Report. Professor, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Steve. Interesting day, to say the least. Interesting, yeah. That's 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 certainly uh, certainly the the case. Okay, so let's um, let's get to it. I mean, are you surprised that and, and well, well, we'll get to coincidences later. But are you surprised <laughs> that um, they went ahead and while Joe Biden has documents and while Mike Pence had documents and while other presidents have had documents? That they would go ahead and 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 indict him on uh, on this case related to documents. You know, the last time we spoke, it's interesting. So, so we talked about the Stormy Daniels case, and, and I said that was garbage. I said the Georgia case that I'm not concerned about that. The federal cases, there's two of them. There's this one with the documents, and then there's the January sixth one. I said those are the ones to watch because federal cases, you know, it's always a slippery slope and the feds have a number of tools where they can box people into corners. Uh, But I am surprised at this. So even though I'm not surprised he's been indicted through the investigation, I'm surprised that he's being charged. And and we do have to state we don't know what the actual charges are. They have not been released. We're not going to find that out till Tuesday. So it's mostly leaks and speculation, which I'll get into that in a minute, too. Uh, But there's one charge that does surprise me, and it's the willful retention of national defense information. The reason I'm surprised that they're charging him with this is because of the special counsel. Yes, there is a special counsel that's looking into President Biden at time, vice president and actually a senator, too, uh, where he was handling classified information, took classified information and retained classified information. So I'm actually surprised that they charge Trump with this because All eyes are now going to turn to the special counsel on Biden. And if you charge President Trump with this, well, why aren't you going to charge President Biden with the willful retention of national defense information? Uh, But it's also interesting because when they say retention of national defense information, that does fall into the Espionage Act. One of the things when it comes to national defense information, it doesn't have to be classified. It doesn't have to be classified information. It doesn't state specifically that only classified information. It could be any information relating to national defense information. So I'm wondering what Jack Ryan has that they're charging him with espionage, essentially. And I'm surprised that the charges aren't in Washington, D.C. if he's being charged with espionage, because that's where usually the charges come out of when it's a case like this. Why are they doing it in southern uh, Florida, which is actually good news for former President Trump? I mean, you'd much rather a a jury pool from southern Florida than a jury pool from Washington, D.C., which is voted 94% in favor of President Biden and 4%, I believe, for former President Trump. So he's better off being in South Florida. But yeah, some of it does surprise me. Some of it does not surprise me. It's the continued targeting that we've been witnessing, the the weaponization of all aspects of our government. And they absolutely despise him. They do not want him running for the presidency of the United States. They want to destroy him. And I can tell you one thing, it is going to be a very interesting presidential campaign because we've never been in this situation before. 
No. And, 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 you know, people don't realize uh, that there's nothing, I mean, aside from time and, and all that, uh, and the logistics of it, there is nothing to stop anyone from running for president, uh, even a- as a convicted felon, even from jail, which was done about a hundred years ago. So, they, I mean, they, they can't stop him. Um, they could stifle him, but they cannot stop him from running by just because they're going to, you know, even if he gets convicted. But but it, it's so blatant, Professor, it's so in your face that, you know, we know that the trial, the, the New York trial is slated to start next March. I mean, right, right in the, <laughs> in the middle of it. And now this one, which here we are months later uh, with a, 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 an apparent indictment, uh, then the uh, other indictment, which was uh, which was the end of December or something, um, or I, I don't even remember when it was already. But um, but my point is that's got to start, I guess, either right, I guess, after the other one is over or before the other one starts. It's going to be one after the other. I mean, could they make it more obvious what they're trying to do? Well, they don't care and they don't try and hide it anymore. And it's because nobody's ever held accountable. I mean, we've seen abuse after abuse after abuse. And, and you know, there's going to be people out there. Oh, you're just defending Trump. This isn't about Trump. Oh, I want to make it clear. This is about the United States of America. It's about our institutions that are corrupted through politics, the, through ideology. I mean, when you look at what's going on, Look at how fast this special counsel operated. Look at how fast they investigated and they're bringing the charges. Now, juxtapose that against uh, President Biden, right? So they had Hunter Biden's laptop. The FBI had it in 2019. We didn't find out about it until the end of 2020 through Miranda Devine's reporting, which was censored by the intelligence community. And then we now find out just last month about the FD-1023 that the FBI has been holding on to since 2020. There's footnotes in there that refer to information from 2017. So you're talking about six years and we're just finding out about it now. We have no idea what's going on with these investigations. We know that there's an IRS investigation going on in Tonto Biden. We have no idea what's happening with that. We know a whistleblower came forward and stated that the Department of Justice is slow walking the investigation and, and Hunter Biden's receiving special treatment. So you're talking about years of investigation. Yet here you have Jack Ryan that was appointed in November of 2022. And here we are just seven months later, and he's already indicting and bringing charges against the former president. So it's pretty clear what's going on here. Yeah. And 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 we should point out that this is not a independent counsel. This is a special prosecutor. This is the this is the Biden DOJ that is that did this, that is doing this. So, I mean, th- th- this is, again, more in your face, more obvious. Um, and, and, you know, when you listen to people like um, uh, uh, Comey uh, talk, uh, he was uh, plugging his book the oh, other God. day, I guess. Oh, God. And, and, and when, you, when you hear him say, not only forget the fact that it has to be Biden, not even any other Republican, uh, which is bad enough. But when you hear him say, yes, the rule of law will be will be destroyed if Trump wins. And it, it just goes to the mindset how they could justify doing anything under the guise of protecting and saving America and democracy and the rule of law and whatever. And they are doing anything they can do. I mean, they're, they're just it's the double standard is is insane. Um, I, I, I mean, do we ever recover from this? No, not until you actually have accountability. And what I mean by that, first of all, you, we've spoken about it before. These are the self-anointed guardians of democracy. They they truly believe that the American people made the wrong decision in 2016, that it's up to them to correct it. These are bureaucrats that are were unelected by the people that think they know better than the people. And that's not the way our system is supposed to work. In fact, the founders actually warned us about this time and time again. They, they warned about this abusive bureaucracy that could take place as government expands. So the in order to correct the problem, we, we have to actually use legislative action. We need a Congress that has the will to begin to remove power from these agencies, to remove power from these departments, and actually consider completely eliminating some departments it's time that we get back to what the founding fathers intended when they called for limited government, when when they wanted to safeguard God-given liberties, when they wanted to safeguard the integrity of our institutions. Unfortunately, today, everything that they feared is coming true. We are slipping into a banana republic. And again, the double standards are so glaringly obvious. 
it, it's not like they're pretending. It's not like they're trying to hide it. You have the Biden Department of Justice. You have the Federal Bureau of Investigation that is covering up the, the potential corruption that exists from the president and the Biden family business. And yet here you have these charges. So we know about the four or we suspect we know about the four that's being reported throughout the media. The other three, I'm suspecting those are going to come uh, obstruction charges, you know, and, and it, amazingly, you know, President Biden, he, he gets to hold on to classified documents when he had no power to declassify documents as a sitting vice president or a then senator too. He had no power to declassify these documents. President Trump did. Now, whether or not President Trump declassified these documents or not, that's a question that's going to be debated in the courts. But I don't think they care about the court system anymore. I think they think they do whatever they want and they're going to get away with it. And as of right now, they have every right to think that way because we just got the dorm report, what, three weeks ago that showed the complete and utter fraud of the Russian collusion hoax that tore this country apart. And, and nothing ever came from that. Here's people working in the highest levels of government and most powerful law enforcement agency that could destroy lives that were lying to the courts. They lied to the FISA court. They manipulated evidence and not a single person went to jail for that. That's staggering. We got another report that the FBI was illegally conducting searches. I think it was over 3 million times collecting Americans' data. And the court has admonished the FBI time and time again about this. And yet nobody's ever been held accountable. We have the FBI being admonished for illegally accessing the National Security Agency's repository on Americans without a warrant. And yet nobody's been punished for that. Nobody's been admonished. So why can't they be so brazen when they're never held accountable? All right. We're talking to, um, uh, of course, Nicholas Giordano, uh, the host of the PSA uh, podcast uh, here on the Steve Malzberg show. All right. So let, let's let switch over for to, to Joe Biden. And it's very interesting. And this is what I talked about coincidence before. Uh, on the very day that we're getting reports that uh, and, and, and let's take it from, you. Remember, of course, the uh, the committee that's uh, investigating uh, the, the whole uh, Biden FBI document. First, only the uh, the chairman, Comer and, and Raskin, the ranking member, were able to see the document. Um, Comer demanded that the, the document be given to the, uh, the committee um, and and they was going to hold the FBI director in contempt. And today was a big day for that. And that, so the FBI capitulated a little. They, they did give it over to the to the whole committee. And some of the Congress people who have seen it and other sources, uh, probably briefed by some of those who have seen it, are saying that the document shows that five million dollars, a five million dollar bribery scheme, actually a 10 million dollar scheme, according to reports, five for Joe Biden, five for Hunter Biden with regard to. Uh, Burisma and Ukraine and all about getting that prosecutor uh, fired, the prosecutor that was um, that was investigating Burisma and and Hunter. And and we know what Joe Biden told Ukraine uh, because uh, we we have it. And I want to play it for the folks. Let's see. Make sure I get the right one here. Um, well, f first, Joe Biden was asked today about the bribery allegation uh, the, the $10 million bribery allegation, and this is cut 89. Here's what he said. I'm supposed to walk off the stage now. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. The bribery allegation, Congresswoman Nancy Mace says there's damning evidence in the FBI file that you sold out the country. Do you have a response to congressional Republicans? Where's the money? I'm joking. Mr. President, Mr. I President, 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 on his face. Um, and of course, we know that all the LLCs and the alleged money laundering uh, from China and from other countries that gave Biden family members all that money. So where's the money is a natural response. But here's uh, Biden in 2020, October of 2020, at the uh, Council on Foreign Relations, bragging about how he threatened Ukraine to fire the prosecutor that Burisma wanted fired, that allegedly Biden got Five million and his son, five million for getting fired. Here's cut number 94. So no, I said, I'm not going to we're not going to give you the billion dollars. They said, you have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours. I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. 
Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid at the time. I mean, I, I mean, if I'm talking to a jury right now and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, well, I mean, th this is part of the problem, you know, and Democrats, some are saying that, well, that's been investigated and there's nothing there. Others are saying that, well, the FBI looked at it and they didn't conduct an investigation because they didn't feel there was enough evidence to conduct. And they don't even have their story straight. But the director could clear this up himself. The director could come out and state whether it's been investigated, whether it's being investigated, whether no investigation was conducted. He'd come out today and say that and, and put an end to that, all the, all the speculation. But he knows if he openly states that there's no investigation, Republicans will have a field day in the Weaponization Committee because they're going to show the corruption double standards. If Director Ray states that it's already been investigated and there's nothing there, then Republicans could subpoena all the documents and the FBI can't hide behind, hey, it's an ongoing investigation. We can't turn them over on Stonewall Congress. If they admit that there is an open investigation, then Director Ray has a series of questions about where the investigation stands. Should a special counsel be appointed, whether the investigation is being slow walked to protect uh, President Biden. So when you look at what's going on, it really is stunning. And unfortunately, th there's no real remedy except for Congress. And Republicans don't have the power in Congress, nor do I think that they actually have the will in Congress to do what's necessary to, to start dismantling this apparatus that exists, this surveillance state apparatus, the big brother apparatus where they could target any political opponent they want to simply because they don't like them. Now, what is interesting, and this is speculation on my part, it wouldn't surprise me if we start to hear things about the Hunter Biden and the Joe Biden investigation. It wouldn't surprise me if we start to hear grumblings from the special counsel. You know, President Biden, they may not have a use for him anymore. And so they may look to, to press forward with that to try and take him out as well so that someone else could run. It, we are living through unprecedented times here in the United States. And anyone that thinks that they could predict what's going to happen, you're, you're fooling yourself. We can't predict what's going to happen. Anyone that tries to downplay or diminish these charges against the former president, uh, I would say don't take them lightly. When the federal government comes after you, remember, and we spoke about it the last time, Chuck Schumer, they have six ways of Sunday to get back at you. And, and all right. we seeing that come to fruition. And we just may be. Well, f two things. First, let me ask you about the coincidence that on the day when and again, the mainstream media wasn't going to report it anyway. The bribery allegations, the what the, what some are saying, the documents show the ten million dollars, five and five. Uh, but nonetheless, on that same day, um, we get the indictment announced. Do you think that there's any connection? Of course there is. I mean, listen, anyone that understands and, you know, po politics isn't rocket science. Let, let's be honest here. A lot of it comes down to common sense. And, and it's not a coincidence that on the same day you're going to get these damaging allegations against President Biden that you get a Trump indictment. I'm sorry. It just doesn't work that way. No, nothing ever works out perfectly like that. And, and yet here we are. So, no, I, I don't think it, it's a coincidence. I don't think it was unintentional. I, I think that they needed something to disrupt the media cycle because if it was simply just what took place in Congress and Congress getting that document, that would have been the main story of the day. And even the, the mainstream press would have had to report on it. They may have only spent 10, 15, 30 seconds on it, but they would have had to bring it up and Republicans could have had a field day. But now that Trump's indicted, well, guess what? The whole landscape changes, right. not just for today. No, tomorrow, no yeah, Saturday, yep. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday is when he Wednesday. has to turn himself in. So yep. so the conversation continues and all the focus is going to be centered on the former president. Now, let me ask you one more question. And it's again, it's speculation, but it fits in with what you say. And I've said similar things in different ways. Um, and w when you talk about what Schumer says, and when you talk about uh, how, how hard it is to fight when the feds come for you and all that, and you talk about there's not a stomach for it in Congress, can all that not, and, and we might have discussed this in the past in different language, isn't it possible that that is all part of the same story? It's all the same puzzle. It, it's one line to that. You draw a straight line to this one, to that one, to this one, that it's all the same part that Congress is afraid. They've been told the word is out. Don't do it. 
Don't do it. Lay off. You'll be sorry. We, if you think we have stuff on him, wait till you see what we have on you. Does Congress live in fear of the federal government, the agencies, the same agencies that are doing this to Trump, that they could do it to them? Yeah, I do. And I do think that then they shouldn't be in office. Did they, if they don't have the courage to stand up, speak out, and, and push back the way that they are empowered to constitutionally, then they don't deserve to be in office. I mean, sometimes I don't care what the fear is. You have to stand up to the abuses that we're witnessing. And for all those that are celebrating today on the left, for all those Democrats that are celebrating, I want to make it clear, this can happen to you. This could happen to the people that you support. You know, a lot of conservatives, they're constantly pushing out the whole idea of Marxism. And, and it's true. There are a lot of Marxists. There are a lot of people that want to usher Marxism into the United States. But people like Christopher Ray, they're not Marxists. Okay, people like James Comey is not a Marxist. John Brennan, on the other hand, he may very well be a Marxist. <laughs> but but most of them are not Marxists. They just think that they're the elite, that they're smarter than everyone else, and they have the right to do what they want, to control it in what they deem as preserving democracy. So, I, you know, I call on the people on the left and I call on the Democrats. Understand that this could easily turn on you when there's someone that you want in office that they don't like. And that's the problem. You cannot have this elite deep state controlling things. They were never elected by the people. They're nameless, faceless bureaucrats. And the only remedy we have is to start depowering them. And the only people that could do that are members of Congress. Right, right. The same people that we both speculate might might be living in fear <laughs> of doing well, just cowards, that. Though. Yeah, but well, they shouldn't yeah, be living and, in fear. Well, you, you know what I mean. Members of Congress have yeah, extraordinary yeah. power too, and and yeah, they may. No, but what I'm saying, that. what I'm saying, Professor, and I know, and I know you understand this. What I'm saying is basically that, I mean, you know, I I always I've speculated for years about John Roberts and the turn that he took, and I, I always said, I said at the time, I remember uh, the, the first case or the first few cases I said on WMAL radio at the time, I said, you know, maybe they slipped a, a Manila envelope under his door one day. And with some information or a list of things he's done that he's not proud of or whatever and said, you better watch it. I'm just saying I have no proof. I don't know. And I'm saying maybe they do that. Maybe they've done that to, to, to every Republican, some Republicans, many Republicans. I don't know. But I'm not. And of course, would they be cowards? Yeah, they'd be cowards. But, you know, self-preservation is uh, is another issue. So I'm just saying that they see what's happening and they say, hey, if they could do this to a president, a former president, uh, a presidential candidate who's all of the above, then, you know, I better watch myself because I've already gotten a warning that they might have something on me. So who knows? I, I, I agree. I understand that. But the thing is, when if you get members of Congress and they're all together and they're all going forward with this, you're not taking 535 of them out. True. Okay, That's so, true. No, no. So, yep, yep, so yep. The, the FBI and the, the law enforcement intel community, they could threaten, they could bully. It's easy to pick off one at a time, but if right. they all stand together and stand up to these abuses, the bureaucracy's done. Yeah, they yeah, get no, shut I, down, yeah. and th and that's why they need to put aside their their partisanship. They need to work together, and unfortunately, you got people like Schiff that don't mind it because oh, it's yeah. targeting his political opponents. But I right. do believe that that you can make them see. I mean, you know, 2015. I'll always say it: CIA spying on duly elected members of the United States Senate. It should have stopped there. Congress should have taken the power back then. They didn't. That's a pox on their house. They have another opportunity to do it now, whether they can do it or not. Like I said, I'm not sure the will is there. Right. Professor, I can't wait to hear uh, the next uh, episodes of uh, the PAS uh, podcast. Help folks where they could go uh, find it. I should have delayed it two days, the, the release, <laughs> <laughs> given all this news. But yeah, they could go to PASReport.com. They could find the podcast there and go to any podcast platform that they, they want to. They could also follow me on Twitter at PASReport. And Steve, I always appreciate being on with you. Absolutely. Well, you know what? Dump the other one and do another one. Or I don't yeah. know how it works for you, but but add another one. Put the, you know, hey, listen, do, do they're, one. they're all relevant. Yeah, oh, no, I don't mean dump it. I mean, just do another do another one, a special one and out of out of sequence or a special, you know, whatever. I'm just I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm but kidding. here's the problem. I got two kids with strep throat in my house right now. <laughs> oh, no. Today oh, was no. like a nightmare. 
Oh my God. Well, well then listen, then I, uh, I extremely appreciate you coming on. I always appreciate it very much, but uh, take care of your kids, take care of yourself and we'll speak soon. And thank you so much, professor. Thank you for listening to the PAS Report Weekly Roundup Podcast. Podcast. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Be sure to rate, share, and subscribe to the podcast so you'll never miss an episode. Also, visit PASReport.com and follow us on Twitter at PAS Report.